Hi, this is CAD CAM Lessons channel and in this video I would like to answer the question of whether FreeCAD can run on Mac Mini M4. The Mac Mini M4 is a relatively new device and has quickly gained popularity due to its price and the specifications it offers at this price compared to other Apple computers. When it comes to 3D CAD systems, they are generally not associated with Mac OS, they are more linked to Windows. So far, Many 3D CAD systems are only available in the Windows version, but there are also 3D CAD systems available for Mac. One of these systems is FreeCAD, which is a completely free 3D CAD system. As you can see, FreeCAD runs on Mac Mini M4. I have the basic specification, which is 16GB of RAM and a 256GB disk. In this configuration, we can run FreeCAD and we can use FreeCAD. Here, I will show you some simple and basic operations so that I can show you that it works and works smoothly, but this is not a full tutorial on the basics of FreeCAD. You can find such tutorials on my channel, and 3D modeling in FreeCAD on Mac looks the same as FreeCAD on Windows. But before we proceed, click here, Open First Start Setup, and you can choose here between light or dark theme. If you choose the light theme, as I have, it will be selected. And now, if we create a new parametric part, we have a white background here. The white background itself is not a problem for many people. Working on a white background can be comfortable, but when we go to the sketch, select sketch on the XY plane, the first thing is, we don't have a grid here. We can enable the grid by clicking this icon, and here the grid will be visible. We can also enable the grid permanently in the preferences. To do this, we go to the FreeCAD preferences menu, Then go to the Sketcher, Grid tab, and here we check Grid. Now the grid should be visible. By the way, we can specify the colors of this grid. We click Apply and OK. What can also happen is that, when creating geometry, that geometry may be created in such a way that, during the creation of this geometry, it will be white and will overlap with the background. In such a case, we also go to the Preferences, then to Sketch Appearance. Here we can specify the line color during its creation. Therefore, if the line is created in white, go to the Preferences and change the color of that line. And here you can change the colors of other geometries. OK, I will close this sketch. Now I will delete this sketch. OK, one more thing regarding the icons. We can change the position of these icons. Here we have a snap, and we can grab this snap and drag it by right-clicking here. We can enable or disable selected icons. And regarding commands, these commands are also available in the Part Design menu, and here we have commands that are available in the icons. If there is a command missing in the icons, we can use it from the drop-down menu. Now I will proceed to create a sketch. I will create a simple solid here. I choose Sketch Creation on the XY plane. And let's create a rectangle. Let's choose the Centered Rectangle option. And I define the center of the rectangle at the origin of the coordinate system to automatically link the center of the rectangle with the origin of the coordinate system. As you can see when I hover over this point, it will be highlighted. Now I click the left mouse button at this point, and the center of the rectangle is linked to this point. I will define the dimensions of the rectangle. Here 100 millimeters. Hit enter. Then 70, and hit enter. We have created a rectangle measuring 100 by 70 millimeters, and this rectangle is drawn in such a way that the center of the rectangle lies at the origin of the coordinate system. I right click to cancel the draw rectangle command. Regarding automatic constraints, we have the option for automatic constraints, and it is worth keeping this option checked. I close the sketch and we will add a pad. We choose the pad operation, and here we define the length of the pad. Let's set the pad to 10 millimeters and click OK. Next, I will create another sketch. I will create a sketch on this face. I select this face choose Sketch Creation, and here I will create a circle, approximately at this point with a diameter of 10 millimeters. I press Enter and right-click to cancel this command. 
I would like this circle to be offset from the edge of the rectangle by 10 millimeters, so that it is offset by 10 millimeters from this edge and 10 millimeters from this edge. I select dimensioning, and now, if I select the center of the circle, I can add a dimension from the origin of the coordinate system. I can define this dimension along the y axis and the x axis, but I cannot define this dimension concerning the edge of the rectangle. To do this, we press Escape, cancel the dimensioning, right click to cancel the dimensioning. We need to create a reference geometry here so that we have some reference geometry to which we can add dimensions or other geometries. For this purpose, I choose to create reference geometry. We use the Create External Geometry command and select this edge, for example. I right click to cancel this command. Here we have a reference point. Now I select this point, I select this point. As for selecting geometry in the sketcher, we do this by clicking the left mouse button. We don't need to press any key, we don't need to hold Ctrl or Shift. Just click the left mouse button on the geometry we want to select and now we choose dimensioning. We can set the dimension relative to this point. Here we set the dimension along the x-axis to 10 millimeters. Hit enter. Now I select this point, I select this point and here we also enter 10 millimeters and I press enter. I right click to cancel the dimensioning and we have created such a circle. Now I will create a second circle. I will create this circle approximately here with an arbitrary diameter. I right click to cancel this command. As for this circle, this circle has no defined position and no defined dimension. By grabbing the geometry, I can freely change the diameter and position of the circle. To specify the dimension of the circle, we can dimension this circle. We select the circle and choose dimensioning. Here we have the automatic dimensioning option and depending on which geometry we indicate, the appropriate dimension will be chosen. If we wanted to use a different dimension, we can expand this command and here we have single dimensions that we can choose. I will not dimension this circle right now. I would like this circle to have the same diameter as this circle and for this I will use the equality constraint. I will link this circle with this circle. I select this circle, I select this circle and here I choose the equality constraint and thus we have specified that this circle has the same diameter as this circle. Now, if I change the diameter of this circle, to do this, I double click this circle with the left mouse button and enter a new value, press enter. The diameter of this circle will also change. And so, we still do not have a specified position for this circle and here we will use a symmetry constraint relative to the origin of the coordinate system. The symmetry constraint will define that this circle will be placed symmetrically to this circle relative to the origin of the coordinate system. To do this, we select the center of this circle, we select the center of this circle, we select the origin point of the coordinate system and we choose symmetry constraint. And now this circle is placed in such a way that it is placed symmetrically to this circle relative to the origin of the coordinate system. If I change, for example, this dimension, I will enter 20 millimeters here. The position of this circle will also be changed. I will return here to the value of 10 millimeters and we will change the diameter to 10 millimeters. And I have created two such geometries. I close the sketch and based on these geometries we will create holes in this solid. To do this we choose the pocket operation. And here we specify the depth of the pocket or we can choose through all type to create a through pocket and click OK to confirm. In this way, we created such a solid. We will create another sketch. I select this face. I choose sketch creation. And here, I choose drawing a rectangle. I select this point as the center of the rectangle. And let's create a rectangle with dimensions 50 by 30 millimeters. OK. I right click to finish this command. What you may notice is that the geometry has changed color to green. And we have here the information that the sketch is fully constrained. A fully constrained sketch is a sketch whose dimensions and position we cannot change freely. We can change the dimensions and position of the sketch by editing the dimensions or by editing the constraints. If we create 2D geometry based on which we will prepare the operation of creating 3D solids, we should strive for the sketch to be fully constrained. Now, when I create some geometry, Pay attention that here there is information that the sketch is not fully constrained and we have three degrees of freedom. 
because this results from the fact that the position and diameter of this circle are not defined, I will delete this circle. To delete some geometry, I select this geometry and press the delete key. I close the sketch and based on this sketch we will create a pocket in this solid, so we use the pocket operation and let's create a pocket with a depth of 5mm and click OK. And we have such a solid, let's add fillets in the corners of this solid. To add fillets, let's select four edges of this solid's corners. To select four edges, we do this while holding the command key. We select the edges and let's choose the fillet operation. Let's add a fillet with a radius of 5 mm. Regarding the values in these fields, we can enter those values from the keyboard or we can scroll with the mouse wheel and then the value will change. Click OK and in this way we added the fillets. Regarding this video, I wanted to show you that on Mac Mini M4 with the basic specification, we can run FreeCAD and we can create 3D models. I do not know how the Mac Mini will perform for fairly complex and advanced projects, but I think that in many cases, especially for home and hobbyist applications, the Mac Mini M4 can be sufficient to run FreeCAD and to smoothly and freely create 3D models. If you would like to learn the basics of FreeCAD step by step, you will find many videos on my channel where I show the basics of FreeCAD. In the description of this video, I will post a link to a rather long tutorial in which I detail the basics of FreeCAD and you will be able to familiarize yourself with the basics of creating 3D models in this system. But as I mentioned, the topic of this video was whether we can run FreeCAD on Mac Mini M4. As you can see, we can run FreeCAD on this device. I have the basic specification of Mac Mini and as you can see, we can run FreeCAD and we can create our own 3D models. I think that with the growing popularity and availability of 3D printers, many people may be interested in creating their own 3D models on Apple devices. So, as you can see, even on this basic version of Mac Mini, we can create our own 3D models and we can prepare such 3D models for 3D printing. And we will end on that. Thank you for watching and please subscribe to this channel.